This is the most expensive fish in the world. There's only three farms in the world that actually have these. Are we gonna be able to try this today? Uh... In the world of fine dining, there's one standout food that comes from one fish from one particular sea. This is the most premium caviar on the market. It comes from sturgeon. Most people know its name, but few really understand where it comes from. The average age of our sturgeon is eight years to have caviar. Today, we're going far from fancy restaurants or city streets. It all starts right here. Jonathan, hey, how you doing? Hey, it's a pleasure to have you here. This is the top of Dalat. We actually have two farms. We have the sturgeon farm that produces caviar, and we have the sturgeon farm that produces the sturgeon meat that we sell as well. Set on a mountainside built downstream from a natural waterfall, you'll find the origin of Vietnamese-made caviar, boasting over 10,000 fish. So first of all, caviar, yep. is that just any type of fish egg? Today, we're joined by Jonathan, executive director of Caspiar Caviar, one of the companies selling the caviar produced at this farm. Well, caviar means fish eggs, period. But the term caviar has been synonymous with the high-end luxury fish eggs only from sturgeon from the Caspian Sea. Now, because fishing is illegal, we raise them. Due to overfishing, catching sturgeon in the wild is illegal. But where there's limitations, there's innovation. With caviar, why is it so dang expensive? Ah, well, that's one of the most easiest questions to answer. Okay, good. There are four types of popular sturgeon species that produce top quality caviar. Beluga, Asietra, Sevruga, and Sterling. The average age of our sturgeon is eight years to have caviar. Wow. This farm began with just Sterling back in 2008, and they didn't harvest any eggs until 2017, nine years later. So why is something like salmon roe so much cheaper? Well, a salmon after eight months has roe. Oh, it just takes eight months. Yeah. These sturgeon, imported straight from the Caspian Sea, are raised here for at least five years before they start developing eggs. You never know for certain when a fish will spawn or lay its eggs. Each fish spawn at a different time. So the only way to do that is to do an ultrasound. And so today we're going to do an ultrasound for you. Shoves it in there about two or three inches. He's gonna disinfect the hole. When they release it back in the water, it'll actually heal. Wow, these fish are tough. The eggs for this fish came out, it's not ready yet. When it turns darker, then it gets ready. Can I eat one of these? No, you shouldn't, I wouldn't. Probably 25 cents of caviar right here. Each fish is carefully monitored, keeping track of their egg development. So these eggs are actually ready. Right, it's kind of a grayish blue. Exactly, in about three months it will spawn. So we have to take the roe out before it spawns. Um, can I eat these? You can try. Okay. They have no flavor. And why are they so expensive? <laughs> this would be good if I had like a tequila shot. Do the tequila, lick the eggs. It just tastes like fish oil. Yeah, pretty much. I don't regret it. Mm. Okay, good. To begin processing the caviar, the traditional Russian technique is employed. He's disinfecting the fish. The fish is so clean, you could literally eat off it right now. Box cutter to the gut. The color is amazing. It's this really brilliant, interesting, kind of grayish blue color. It looks really awesome. Each pound could cost up to $800, but this price isn't even close to the most rare prized caviar available on the market. This is the most expensive fish in the world. Really? Yes. These are albino sturgeon. There's only three farms in the world that actually have these that I know of. $10,000 a kilogram. Wow. Is there any difference in the flavor or do people just like the fact that it's so rare and unusual? There is a difference in the flavor and the color. The color is absolutely white and gold. Are we gonna be able to try this today? Do you have $10,000 on you? <laughs> uh, I could get a bank loan. Well, here we are. What a fancy location. Here we are. Today, we're sampling the more traditional Caspiar Imperial Black Caviar and the even more rare, more expensive, Sundale Golden Albino Caviar. Just another sunny day. So the last thing I saw in person was them cutting the fish and then moving the eggs into a bowl. Can you tell us what happened between there and here? What they'll do is they'll have a tammy, sort of like a sieve, and they'll actually roll the egg sac so all the individual eggs come out. Then they wash it and then they'll carefully measure salt. Our salt is actually imported salt. And then we'll put it into big tins. We'll let it age for about three days. Then we individually put it into each tin and we vacuum seal it. 
Today, I'm going to show you guys how to eat caviar on the fly. Great. Ha. Ah, now, hold out your left hand, all right, upwards, and then make a small fish like this. This is how people eat caviar at a party. Yeah, I did not know that. When you eat it, put it onto your tongue, and you let it sit for about three seconds, and you slowly push it up to the roof of your mouth, the eggs would separate by itself. I've always just been seeing how fast I could eat it. <laughs> Do it. Let's go. Wow. Mm, and I'm not drunk this time. I'm usually pretty drunk if I'm ordering caviar. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. It's really nice. This has a very distinct cashew finish, where others are peanut or almonds. Right. The water in our farm creates this flavor. I didn't know that my hand can be like the utensil. The serving, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is. Here, albino sturgeon. I mean, completely different, a world yeah. apart, even though it's from the same species of same fish. Same species, same fish. They call this on the street, white pearls. On the streets. On the streets. Yeah, I don't know what streets you grew up on. <laughs> what you're gonna taste is the same, but at the end there's gonna be a light, salty citrus burst. You ready for that? Mm. Let's right. burst, shall we? Cheers. 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 Did you get the citrus at the end? You should just say yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> 100%. The eggs themselves are more delicate, tender. The taste still very rich. A little bit more similar to a salmon roe. Almost, isn't it? It has more of the fish flavor in it than the imperial. But we treat it exactly the same way when we make it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is that it's a pleasure? Was that your caviar hand? No, that was my caviar. Okay, good. I don't want to <laughs> shake the caviar hand. Black sturgeon caviar is the one true caviar, and soon we'll see it brought to its highest potential. Hey, we're doing it. Yay! It's actual dinner service right now in this restaurant. And uh, we brought lights. <laughs> First up, pickled beetroot cubes are placed inside a beetroot. Some spices, smoked creme fraiche, imperial caviar. And finally, dill. When you pay $2 for street food, do you get something that's literally smoking? Real fire, maybe? <laughs> yeah, maybe it's on fire. So this is really great. Based on a Russian dish called borscht. Let's dig deep and try to get a little bit of everything. Mm. Oh my god. Mm. The beets themselves are very underrated. But here, he's brought the beet to its highest potential. And really, the caviar and the cream together, and everything else is just splendid. And then you eat the bowl, I think. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> Course two, finally putting the wood fire grill to work. Kaido scallops, grilled, and placed atop a seaweed bed. On the side, potato foam and Asietra caviar, coming from another prized sturgeon species. I'm gonna try a little bit of this potato foam with the caviar on top. Wow, that's from a potato? Oh, that's delicious. It's smoky, creamy, and the caviar is just soft and salty, but salty doesn't do it justice. It's not the same as just putting salt on there, like that ocean-y kind of saltiness. I was worried at first that I was the type of person who maybe I liked caviar because it made me feel fancy, but I think I legitimately like it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You're one of them now. <laughs> I'm one of them. Give it a little bit of a dip. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, that's so juicy. I don't know if I deserve this karma. I feel like something bad is going to happen to me after we leave. I'm excited about the next one. I don't know what he can do with caviar, I mean. A freaking bone. But this dish goes deeper. We want to see what's inside the bone. Have you ever had bone marrow before? Yeah, but not this big. Oh, like from a goat? No. <laughs> no. I've had bone marrow from a goat. I thought maybe you meant the same goat. This thing gets grilled, roasted, and torched until the marrow inside breaks down, becoming irresistible. Then it's topped with an abundance of Asietra caviar. Oh man, it's so heavy. This is so crazy. Oh my god. I don't know how much is too much. Okay. She is. Oh my god. This is so good it makes me angry. Mm. Obviously fatty and rich as heck, but something happens when he puts the caviar on there. They complement each other. I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> caviar. To be honest, I didn't get it. I've had it a couple times before. It just seemed like, okay, salty fish eggs. But now, after going through this whole process, I definitely have a deeper appreciation for why it's so valuable, but also why people like it so much. I do appreciate that the chef can be so flexible about using the same caviar. Like, I really don't know that it can be in so many different dishes in many forms. Much like life, caviar is meant to be savored. Yes, we should slow down for things like our kid's birthday, a first kiss, or a beautiful sunset. But that $20 dollop of eggs piled atop a ceramic spoon commands our attention, and it deserves our respect. It can make time stand still for one precious, salty moment.